Council Member Mike Bonin, good morning to you. Thank you for getting up so early there on the West Coast. Um, and thank you for joining us. How are you this morning? I'm, I'm doing great, bright and early. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, the pleasure is ours. That that ad is um, touching, and I um, I really think you nailed it. It's the it's the realization that you don't have a place to rest your head when that sun goes down. That really strikes at the heart of all of the homeless and unhoused populations. Um, tell us about your journey from being unhoused to leading the charge against um, homelessness? Well, you know, uh, when I when I got to Los Angeles in, in, in my early 20s, uh, like so many people, you know, the reality of Los Angeles didn't match up to my dreams. And I fell into drugs and, and was doing a lot of meth and I, I wound up on some hard times. And um, uh, I was able through sobriety to get my life back and uh, to to turn it around. And that's been sort of a, a touchstone for me in that I, I know that we can all stumble and, and we all fall down, but I also know that that big, huge transformation is possible and people can change their lives and and nobody uh, is is beyond help. And we owe mm. it to each other to help each other. And mm. in LA, we're in the middle of a dystopian crisis. I mean, if, if for most of your listeners who aren't from LA, in LA County, there are 50, 60,000 people who are homeless, and mm. 70% of them are unsheltered every night. Four or five wow. people are dying on our streets every day. There are tents, encampments on streets in almost every neighborhood, in front of homes, businesses, schools, parks, everywhere. I mean, it is it is end of times uh, scenarios here. And um, we're sort of at a point in L.A. where we're either going to do what we know works, which is house people and give them services, or we're going to double down on the, on, on the stupid, expensive, failed strategies we've done for decades, which is try to push the problem away and criminalize it. Mm. You know, I um, look at uh, I'm trying not to nationalize the conversation um, because there are local solutions to some of these problems. Right. Tell us about some of the solutions that you all are taking there uh, on the city council in partnership with uh, nonprofits, innovations um, that you all have to address these situations. Sure. I mean, there, there, there's a lot that, that we're doing locally to, to demonstrate that there is a way to house people quickly. But um, I'll, 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 I'll keep it nationalized, actually, because okay. be, things, things have changed because of what's been changing nationally. Um, OK. You know, we, we, we've had uh, in, in the past year during the pandemic, uh, the, the city temporarily stopped breaking up encampments because CDC said, all you're going to do is make people sicker. You're going to spread disease. Don't do this. The federal government gave us money to instead uh, lease motel rooms and put right. people at the government's dime uh, into motel rooms temporarily. Program has been a mixed success, uh, and the city has not nearly uh, availed itself as fully as it could have from it. But as a result of the pandemic, hundreds, thousands of more people were visibly homeless living in our parks. Over the summer, St. Joseph Center, a local nonprofit, and the Homeless Services Authority um, uh, worked with me, and we helped move 213 people indoors into temporary housing through these motel programs. But the federal government, thanks to the, the, the new administration, uh, has made permanent housing resources available, these 10-year vouchers. So we were able to get folks into temporary housing, and now we have a pathway to get them into permanent housing. So of 213 people who came indoors in August, 55 of them are already in permanent housing. That's, that's wow. a faster clip than, than L.A. has done before. We have another park in my district uh, near LAX where uh, working with people assisting the homeless and a group called Grassroots Neighbors, just neighborhood volunteers who do outreach in the, in the park. Ninety people were moved indoors uh, just last month. Eleven of them are already in permanent housing. Uh, wow. What it's about is, is, is busting the myth that people who are homeless deserve to be homeless or choose to be homeless. Okay. And 
instead of pushing them from one neighborhood to another. And we have a, a, a sheriff who's who's wandering around the city doing that. Uh, other council members who are doing that. Our thing is, let's get people not just a temporary place to stay, but a long term place to stay. So they know we're not pushing them around. Uh, and that's where lives begin to change. And that's when you begin to see a visible difference on our streets. Tell us a little bit more about that 10 year voucher. That's the distinct difference. I mean, that is that's a long that is long term housing that gives you a chance to get your entire world shifted. When did that program become accessible to the public and how else are you all rolling it out? That uh, has become available because of Biden and the Democratic Congress um, uh, as part of the the covid recovery programs they passed. Uh, they they made uh, uh, the, these vouchers available, uh, their emergency housing uh, vouchers that, that came about as a result of response to the covid pandemic. Um, and it, it's sort of like a, a a lottery ticket in some ways, a winning lottery ticket, because. The missing resource has always been the long term housing. You know, you can put somebody in a shelter that gets them out of sight, but that just keeps them homeless in a less visible manner. You have to find mm -hmm. long term housing. These vouchers do that, but it's still tricky. You still have to find a unit for someone. You still have to find a That's landlord right. willing to accept it. So right. um, it, it's still hard work, even from that point, but it mm. really has been a, a game changer from, from, from what we've experienced before. Council member Bronin, uh, Bonin, I, I'm listening to you. I look at your ad, I see your passion, more importantly, your compassion, but I'm, I heard that there's a recall effort against you. Uh, what did you do to make these people want to recall you? Well, there's a, there's a couple different things. I'm, you know, arguably the most progressive member of the uh, L.A. City Council and the, uh, the the sort of right wing tool of choice in California these days, uh, whether it's progressive prosecutors in San Francisco uh, or in Los mm -hmm. Angeles, uh, our, our governor or, or even uh, lefty uh, council members up in Seattle. The right wing tool of choice on the West Coast has been recalls. And um, uh, my recall is being run and managed by right wing operatives from Orange County and from 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 Utah. Uh, the, the forces behind it are people who have sued and appealed and protested to stop homeless housing in my district, people who don't want solutions in in my district, which is a a, a wealthier uh, coastal area. People don't want to see solutions there. Um, and th there's also a big part of it, though, is I've been you know, the council is probably the council's most outspoken supporter of of Black Lives Matter and reimagining public safety and the police union, uh, conservative talk radio. They have all rallied behind this recall and are really making the argument that homelessness equals crime uh, and uh, progressives are, are are the cause of both of those things. Right. Right. That is that is the game. I um. And I, I love the way that you framed it. I, I mean, it's the reality, but I think that's the way we should frame it across the country, that the tool of choice in California is the recall effort. We saw that with Governor uh, uh, Gavin Newsom um, surviving against uh, the right wing ideologue, uh, his, uh, Larry Elder. Um, yep. So and, and it seems like we go through this every so many years in California and they are targeting you as the most one of the most progressive people on that um, on that council. Um, I want you to leave us with your vision vision um, specifically for homelessness what how do we how would you if you had a magic wand how would you address the issue of homelessness um yeah, the floor is yours well thanks L let me say two things about that we, we're now entering election season in los angeles i'm simultaneously up for re-election and probably facing a recall uh half of the city council is up for for re-election we have an open mayor's race i think that the next six or eight months in los angeles is is going to be a citywide referendum on how we approach homelessness are we going to do what we know works which is housing and services works for everybody uh, housed and unhoused, encampments disappear, people's lives are saved. Or are we going to double down on, on the, the stupid, cruel, expensive and ineffective policies that criminalize people and make homelessness worse and, and push it around?